Alright, so we're going to take a look at the wiring of the power supply and the stepper driver and the control board. So I've got these models available. Okay, so we're going to wire the control board. I would tin the wires. It uh, makes it much easier to deal with these silly little. Oh, and another nice thing is that you gotta make sure you unscrew these. Now, all the grounds on this board are common to each other. So we're gonna wire this up in the simplest manner possible. So the best thing to do is to wire this little guy first. So this is 5 volts and we're going to come over and we're going to connect it into V1. So we're not going to tighten it down yet. Now we're going to connect this ground wire. So we're going to connect three, we connect up three ground wires, and whoops, almost put it in the wrong spot, to the ground on the stepper driver. Okay, then this one is going to come over to pulse negative. Oh. I guess I didn't get this one tinned. That's why you want to tin your wires. Oh, pulse negative. There we go. And then we got one little jumper. We're going to jump from pulse negative to direction negative. Okay. Then we're going to take this and run it to the common between V1 and V2. We're going to grab this wire. We're going to wire that to the 24 volt side, which is V2 is 24 volts, V1 is 5 volts. Okay, so now we've got our 5 volts wired to the controller, 24 volts to the stepper driver, and we've shared these comments. We're going to take the green wire and it's going to go in this center screw terminal. And I apologize for these little screw terminals. The next ones I'm going to order will be 5 millimeter pitch. So this is the pulse wire in the middle there. The direction wire is the one on the left. Okay. So the green wire from the center terminal is going to go to Pulse plus, okay. Direction plus. Make sure I get it in there before I start screwing it down. Okay. Oh, look at what happened here. Might have cut that one a little short. If you fire it up and something ain't right, check your commons. Happens to me all the time. Okay. So that's basically that. Now, these two pins, we've got a common on the left and a signal pin on the right. And that is going to operate the dust cover. So now we're going to wire up this rocker switch. Common on the left, signal on the, on the right with the red wire. Okay, now we're all wired up to run the dust cover. So what we need is the cable coming from the magazine. So we're going to take that cable, the green, the red, and the black wires 
all are all about the infrared sensor. These are the four stepper wires and what we're going to do is we're going to start here with brown in A positive, yellow A negative, blue in B positive, and purple B negative. I can't stress how much easier it makes life if you tin your wires. So now all we have to do is get power to this. These power supplies can run on 110 or 220 and it automatically switches internally. Okay, so let's hook up our wires. I'm just hooking this up to 110. So I get my line, neutral, ground. Alright, so we'll grab a magazine, plug that in. Okay, I heard the motors engage. Now, it's a simple matter to operate this. Oh, went the wrong way. So, make sure I never went back and tightened my wires down there. I thought I was going to plug another wire in, but I'm not going to do that yet. So, let me tighten these down. Alright, now let's try it. And, and it's still not working. AT tiny's upside down. So we just wasted that one. Oh what the black piece? This is an AT tiny. I had it in there upside down like a retard. Oh. Oh what it burnt it out or? Oh yeah, it's burnt out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Why is it going so far? Oh I know why, because I don't have a dust cover. That is not right. And I see our dip switches are not set right. So the dip switches will be three, five, and six down. Three, five, and six down. The rest of them up. And there we go. That's what we want. So. It's a simple matter of opening and closing the circuit. Operates a dust cover. On certain boards, the outputs will work on their own. On other boards, and I'm getting ready to check it with a on a Maso G3, and um, they have TTL outputs, and I'm not really sure that that type of output will work, but I'm going to find out here shortly. The next thing that we need to look at is the infrared sensor. What we've got is the black, red, and green wire. So we're gonna this these wires are going to gonna connect the black to the common, and then I'm also gonna connect this black wire to common. The red wire is five volts for the infrared sensor. So we're going to plug that right in here. So this red wire is going to connect to the green wire, which is our signal wire. So you've got a common in the signal wire and most inputs you'll be able to plug that right in to the common and the input number. Now this will work on any board that has internal pull-up resistors and even if they're neutral but if it has a pull-down resistor it's not going to work so what you need is a pull-up resistor this is a 5k pull-up resistor hidden in here and the way that works is you connect the pull-up resistor to 5 volts and then it is going to join these two so that the signal 
is being pulled high. The infrared sensor goes low when it's activated, when the signal's blocked. And I can't show you right that, that right now because we have to hook it up to the board. I'm going to be doing videos on different boards, hooking up the sensors and the, uh, oh, I don't have it turned down, and the uh, dust cover to different boards.